it has arrived. September. Summer is coming to a close. Kids are going back to school. And here you are with all these thoughts about the shift. September. It's a time for change. The transition into a new season, new energies, new possibilities. It's no wonder that September is considered self-care awareness month. You need this. I need this. So here's what I was thinking. I thought that I would take this week for a little one-on-one to get you into the spirit of this transitional season and do something a little different because quite frankly, this is that time of year where we're really standing at attention. You know, there's a lot of thoughts going on. It's the fourth quarter, what happens next? And I thought that This might be a good idea because I myself am going through a transition, having a lot of feelings that are surfacing. So this is for me too. So I want to share this with you. So my plan is to spend some time with you today during this conversation to share some actionable steps, 30 days of self-care, simple things that you can do to bring about joy, happiness, good health physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, just by focusing on self. Now, I know you might be thinking, focus on myself for a whole 30 days. Are you crazy, Hillary? That sounds a bit selfish. Well, not really. It's not selfish. It's actually essential. Because showing up for others powerfully means showing up for yourself first. And when you do, it's delicious. That's the best word I can think of to describe it. And I promise, I promise you that this is something really important for you to think about. So that's really your first step right there is to carve out some time every day for self-care. It doesn't mean you have to namaste all day or grab a massage or write in your journal like you're Hemingway, although you can, but Really, it can be just as simple as sitting in the silence with that VIP in your life. And by the way, that VIP is you. So let's start there with time for self-care. The second step is to bring awareness to the things that you do well. You're hard on yourself, aren't you? I get it because I am too. And it's easy for us to pass over the small achievements and say, ah, it's not big enough. But what I want you to do is to celebrate the small wins. Find delight in telling yourself as much as possible, wow, good job, and see what happens. And that's where step three comes in. Speak to yourself kindly. Negative self-talk doesn't do anything for your emotional well-being except beat you down. And I had one of those moments myself this week and I, I felt like crap talking to myself like a bully on the playground and it achieved nothing. So just as easily as those unkind words came out of my mouth, so did the opposite. And I turned it around because staying in that place, um, it doesn't change anything. So why stay there at all? Witness it and move on. It could take a few minutes, but you'll get there. I did. Is what I'm saying actually true is another thing to think about. This is still on the same step, but this is kind of helping you move forward. And it goes back to that think method that I shared with you a while back. Ask yourself when you talk in that negative tone, is it true? Is it helpful? Is it inspiring? Is it necessary? And is it kind? The think method, right? I love that. And if all five of those things are not present, please stop change the direction and make an effort to let go of that self-criticism. 
do it as much as you can. Think of something you like about yourself and sit with that for a moment. Because as I always say, be kind to your mind. Think before you speak, not only to others, but also to yourself. So step number four is when you are hard on yourself, self-care can also mean being forgiving. When things go awry or they're off kilter, lighten up on yourself. Everyone makes mistakes. Mistakes are lessons and they are learning experiences. So you can easily turn that mess into a message for yourself. Number five, now, now that I have your attention and I shared a couple things with you, let's go the other way. I want you to relax a little bit, plan a fun activity and really make time to enjoy it. It could be as simple as going out and about or just chilling, but just make it meaningful and intentional and see what happens and let it align with yourself so that it becomes self-care. What do you love to do? What brings you joy? Whatever it is, do that. Number six is kind of obvious, and we're turning the focus to the basics. You need to eat, you need to move, and you need to sleep. I just want you to do it better. These simple daily do's can make a big difference in how your day goes. If these are already a regular part of your routine where you take extra care in this area, go one step further, okay? A new food, uh, a new fitness class, or maybe just an extra nap, right? A little recharge will do you good. This body of yours is a vehicle, so treat it well. Number seven is take your time. We live in this mad, mad world. Everyone is in such a rush and self-care means making space to just breathe and be still. And what is so wonderful about that being still is that many times when you're asking questions, well, the answers really come in the silence. So take that time to be still and you will find what it is you're looking for. Number eight, well, I guess number seven goes pretty well with number eight because it's talking about all those woulda, coulda, shouldas that are in our lives, right? Who says you should do anything? Avoid the I should statements, and here's why. Should comes from a place of being wrong, that you left something out maybe. That's a good way to put it. And it's really it's really setting you up for fail. Can those shoulds in your life change the words that you use? You're not doing yourself any favors by setting yourself up for those woulda, coulda, shoulda pradas. Okay. And we'll talk about language later, but let's move on to number nine. It's okay to do nothing every once in a while. And this goes back to the shoulds. You feel so much about the shoulds. What about just being? Nothing actually is something. Another step in self-care could just be taking a break, right? The power of the pause can really create the space for more creativity, more clarity, and of course, more calm. So give yourself that. I promise you it'll make a difference. Number 10, and one of the biggest ways to throw a wrench in the wheel of your self-care is comparing yourself to others. How you feel inside has nothing to do with how others appear outside. You never know the battle that someone else is fighting or what is truly going on with them. And there is so much more beneath the surface. And even if you know what is going on with somebody and they've shared with you, your journey is your own. So stop comparing. You're beautiful because 
you're you. Number 11 is giving yourself credit for the gift that you are. A wonderful way to remind yourself of self-care is practicing self-confidence. The confidence in your skills, in your strengths, in your talents. Find a new way to show the world these things and you'll get a nice boost in believing in yourself because of the gifts that you have to share. If you don't share these gifts, and this was shared with me once before, it's almost as if you're doing a disservice to the world. So be brave in that way and share those gifts. Number 12 is saying no, saying no to others, because that could in many ways mean saying yes to yourself. This one might be a little tough to do because we tend to want to be people pleasers, but there are the detrimental sides to doing that too much. You want to give yourself permission to say no, and you don't have to please and serve everyone. It's not your responsibility to be their joy. One thing I never say to people is, you make me happy. It doesn't mean they don't bring happiness into my lives. Rather, what I say to people is that you add happiness. You bring it into my life. But when you put the power outside of yourself, it doesn't serve you and it certainly doesn't serve others because you're putting pressure on them. Nobody wants to know that they are your happiness or you're relying on them for that. So be mindful with the amount of yeses that leave messes when it comes to your mental health. Say yes to you first. Number 13, be okay letting go. If it doesn't serve you, if it doesn't align with you, if it doesn't touch, move, and inspire you, let it go. And that it can really be anything. Your happiness matters most, right? That it can be anything. So it could be a person, it could be a situation, it could be a location, it could be a job, it can even be a hobby that you enjoyed. Letting go of something creates the space for something new to present itself. And you're already ahead of the self-care game just in that awareness. So let it go. Number 14, something else to let go of is perfection. Instead, aim to be good or be better. One of my favorite shirts that I have and I love to wear says work in progress because there is always room for growth and learning and being. If you strive for perfection, you're basically saying that there is a cap or an end ahead of you. Is there? Just be your best self and leave room for possibilities. It's a beautiful thing. Number 15, let go of others' expectations of you. I guess we're kind of on a let go kick here, but expectations can really ruin both sides. What they think you should do has nothing to do with what you should do. That's just adding additional pressure because really the voice that truly matters is your own. Self-care means being empowered by your own inner knowing. No one else can empower you. No one else can heal you. So you need to trust your gut, your intuition, your knowing. And while you're at it, careful with what you express and your expectations towards others too. It really goes both ways. And one of the biggest lessons I learned, and this is number 16 in my own self-care practice is, this is really a big one for me, and my team will probably back me up on this, is asking for help. This was hard. It still is sometimes. Because you can do many things, but you can't do it all. And that goes for me that goes for me too. And it's okay. It's okay to ask for help. The most mature thing you can do, the biggest growth moment 
is being aware of that fact that reaching out and saying, hey, I need a hand here, actually is going to free up more time for you and will help you spend more time on some of the self-care practices I'm sharing here or more. You just got to release the reins a little bit. And I feel like some ways I'm talking to myself here too, because when you do, you avoid the burnout, you avoid the overwhelm and also making unnecessary mistakes. I get it. It can be hard to let go of control. Trust me. But when you do, you have more of that number one step. You have more time for yourself, the ultimate self-care. If you need help in this area, I will say this, that I'm definitely in your corner because I get it. So reach out to me, schedule a call, and we can create a plan together to put the power of active emotional well-being back into your own hands. I'm just here to be a guy by your side. I am here in service, and I'm happy to help you help yourself. Basically, we will hug it out for your health. In other words, what I'm telling you is I've got your back. All you have to do is ask. So number 17 is one of those things I love to do in my own self-care practice and also love to share with my clients as well is write down three things that you appreciate about yourself. I really love doing this. Sometimes seeing it in black and white, how truly awesome you are is all the appreciation you need. You've got to be your own cheerleader. You've got to be your own advocate first. And it paves the way for others to show up for you with ease when you're putting out that kind of energy for yourself. So give it a try. Number 18, while we're appreciating ourselves, I want you to ask a friend or a family member or someone that you trust, I want you to ask them to tell you about your strengths. See what they see in you. Sometimes hearing it from others can be that jolt of joy you need. Things that we might forget about ourselves. Sometimes the things that people see from the outside looking in that we miss. And I want you to take it one step further here. Share it in return. And by that I mean kindness is contagious. So you can actually make a game of this by volleying back and forth. Share with one another exchange. Tell somebody what you like about them and let them do it back. It's really a win-win and it creates a space for not only better communication, but connection. Okay. Number 19, let's take a walk down memory lane, shall we? Open up a photo album or the shoebox of pictures. I'm really dating myself there. Or even check your phone and be present with your past experiences, celebrations, and just those wonderful moments that have brought you joy. That in itself can be self-care. There are a lot of memories out there that you've had, a lot of good ones, so enjoy them. We take pictures and we put them in boxes and we keep them on our phone and we tend not to look at them again. That's what they're for, just as a reminder to ourselves and how beautiful it is to be witness to that once again and not just in the moment that it happened. Number 20, leave yourself some love notes. I do this all the time. I love doing this, leaving empowering notes, quotes, messages, sayings all around my home, on my mirrors, my whiteboard in my office, my fridge. If you knew the amount of yogi tea bag sayings that I have around my house, you would think that they would be sponsoring this podcast. By the way, yogi tea, are you listening? I'm available. <laughs> But wherever you find the words, be it on a tea bag or a thank you note that you received, if it really resonates with you, post it somewhere. Fall in love with yourself every day and do it often. It creates the space for others to love you even more. Number 21. Mm, you might have a a little problem with this one, but I know I've said it before and I will say it again. Step away from technology. I know it's hard, 
But when you disconnect from tech every once in a while, it creates the space to reconnect with yourself. We are really attached to our cell phones, these little computers in our hands. Even well, the, the amount of time we spend looking at a computer. Take time for peace and be present. That is the ultimate self-care. Technology will be there tomorrow. It's okay. You deserve this. All right, number 22. I was unsure if I was going to share this one, but I, I think it's really important, and that is to practice good hygiene. We all know that when we're in a funk and when we're feeling down, sometimes we're sitting on the couch eating crackers, crumbs all over us, didn't take a shower. Okay, it's, a t- it's, it's okay to wallow every once in a while, but this, this is important for your social, your medical, and your psychological well-being. It also improves the way that others view you and how you view yourself. So take care of yourself, please. It's the ultimate, ultimate way to say, I love myself when you really put attention to your personal well-being. All right, number 23, take a moment to accept yourself just as you are. So if you decide to pass over 22 and not take that shower for a day, that's okay. Be witness to it. Feel what you're feeling because all parts do matter. And it's going to help you understand yourself better and then jump in the shower. Don't go too long without that one. So 22 and 23 kind of fit together. (laughs) All right, number 24, when things seem overwhelming or a little too much, I want you to go easy on yourself and remember that it is okay not to be okay. Does that make sense? That's really an active part of self-care is just being honest and nurturing yourself just as you would a child. So be easy on yourself. It's okay to not be okay. But just also be aware how long you want to stay in that place. Because we need you. Number 25. It's one of my faves. I guess I have a lot of faves here. But I would say this is a big one. Connect with nature. So you can connect to yourself better. There's something really beautiful about embracing the openness around you. And I'm sure you know this. Every time you go outside, every time you hear the birds singing or maybe taking a walk or a hike, there's really something quite beautiful about that. The energy, the vibration, the frequency. Don't deny yourself that. If you are feeling that funk, get outside. And even if you're feeling great, why not feel better? You may be surprised with what shows up when you do. And I'll be sharing a little more about that because it really is quite beautiful what comes into your presence when you just take some time to connect with nature. Number 26, (laughs) stay hydrated. Yeah, you know where I'm going with this one. We've all seen the meme. We've all seen it, right? And it is really right on target. If you drink a gallon of water per day, you won't have time for other people's drama because you're going to be too busy peeing. I love that, but it's so true. So drink your water like it's your job. Your body is going to thank you for it. All right. Number 27, discover your childish enthusiasm. Do something fun. Be a kid again. Giggle, laugh, play, jump in some puddles, dance in the rain, whatever you want to do. Your inner child is waiting for you every single day show up for them, give them attention. And while you're at it, give them a hug. Number 28, listen to music. Just like you can find peace and calm in the silence, there is truly something so powerful when music touches your soul. Find your favorites, the ones that make you want to dance or be open to something new. And speaking of new, I'm going to share with you some possibilities so that you get yourself in the flow a little bit. Number 29, be mindful. And by that, I mean practice deep breathing, consider meditation, visualize, 
find mantras that lift your spirit, consider a new alternative approach. I mean, have you tried havening? I've talked about it so many times and it really changed my life. If you want to know more about havening techniques, let me know. I'm happy to share more with you. But if you have your own alternative approaches too, I'd love to know, share them with me. But there's always room for more to put in that little brain candy jar I always talk about. And finally, number 30, say I love you daily and often. There is no better self-care than being 100% present and purposeful with yourself. Look in the mirror, see the beauty before you, and just say it with intention. I love you because you are enough and you're worthy. So tell me, which one of these resonates with you? I hope many, and I would love to know. And you can reach out to me on social media or leave your thoughts wherever you listen to this podcast. Apple and Spotify are always great places to start. Just let me know. It helps me to share more beautiful content with you. And I love to know what resonates with you, you know? So tell me, let me know, and we'll go from there. And if you need extra support in the area of self-care, let's set up a call. Let's do it as soon as possible so that we can work together and I can show you how to practice active emotional well-being. I'll share some amazing brain candy tips that you can put in your joy jar, including ways to self-haven and how you can hug it out for healing. Hug it out for your mental health. It's so important. Sometimes all it takes is someone to be present, a guy by your side to mirror back at you what you don't see in yourself in the moment. And I can be in that corner for you. So you've got quite a list of possibilities here to take September by storm. And I just can't wait to hear what you're practicing, how you're putting self-care into action. It really is as easy as one step at a time. And holistically speaking, I just want to say thank you for taking the time to be here, to listen, to really embrace what I'm sharing with you today and um, give it a shot. Holistically speaking is recorded on Squadcast with beautiful music by Lidbone Redding. And on that note, I just want to let you know that I love you. Continue to be kind to your mind. And of course, don't forget to laugh.